Hello, my name is Brian Slater. I teach in the Sumner School District in Sumner, Washington. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can get a hold of me at email, brian underscore slater, that's B-R-Y-A-N underscore slater, at sumnersd.org. You can also reach out to me on Twitter at teach slate. Today what we're going to be doing is looking at an efficient, effective way to create lesson plans using Google Forms. Also going to show uh, our Sumner School District employees how to embed uh, the resulting Google spreadsheet into your Swift websites. So that way uh, you have a pretty seamless integration of your lesson plans as, as well as a, an effective way to communicate with students and parents as to what you're doing in each of your respective classes. So uh, first thing you're going to want to log into your dashboard. Um, you can do that by going to my.sumnersd.org. Uh, once you get into that, you're going to want to select your Google Drive, um, this little triangle looking thing right up here. That's going to take you to your Google Drive, at which point uh, you're going to want to click New, go down to More, and select Google Forms. Once the forms open up, you're going to want to label this form. Um, we'll call it Lesson Planning. 2015, 2016, hit OK. That'll relabel your form here at the top of the first page. Uh, first question is always there by default. Uh, you can change the type of question simply by selecting right down here where it says multiple choice. The first question you're going to want to type in there is date. Uh, and you're going to have a date type of a question there. Uh, make that required. That way you cannot, uh, under any circumstances, submit your form without having the date entered. The second question you're going to want to ask yourself in this Google form is what you did. You want to basically uh, select add item, click the little drop down menu there, and uh, we're going to select paragraph text. Now uh, it's going to ask you to submit a question here. What you're going to type in here is your course title. So for the sake of my lesson planning, I'm going to type in IB history. I'm going to go ahead and make that required and hit done. Now, if you guys end up having lesson plans already written out and perhaps you wanna, you wanna do lesson reflections instead of uh, lesson plans or you wanna simply have something on your website that allows kids to see what you actually did in class, um, then you might add an item here and just call it reflection. Uh, that way what you can do is um, you can, in, after typing out what you did in that class, if you'd like to write yourself a note in reflection, uh, you can do so. Now the key is that you don't want to make that required because you might not have reflection after each uh, class. So I'm going to go ahead and add my second course here. We're going to call this Honors World History. I'm going to go ahead and just type in a paragraph. I'm going to make that required. Um, one thing I'm going to change this here, I'm going to call this IB History Reflection because I want to be able to differentiate in my spreadsheet that will result from this form. I want to differentiate uh, what the reflection is for. That way when I'm looking at the spreadsheet I know what the column is. I'm going to call this World History Reflection. I'm not going to make it required. And then I'm going to do two more here. We're going to do TOK11. That's for my 11th graders. Make that required. Add another paragraph. TOK11 Reflection. Learn to type there. Hit done. And then one more. TOK12. Make that required. And TOK reflection. TOK12 reflection. Okay. So at this point now, uh, we have a general lesson planning form here. Um, if you want to see what this looks like, uh, you're going to definitely want to click on this view live form. That will take you up uh, to where you're going to be submitting your lesson plans. Uh, so you're going to want to definitely add this to your bookmarks. Uh, I would put this on your bookmark bar, um, which right here, and hit done. And it's going to put this up here. The reason why I would recommend doing this is that way, whatever you're doing, you, you get on your computer, you log in, you can click here, and at the end of each day of teaching, you simply click on this little lesson planning um, bookmark here, and you can quickly get to typing what you did in that in each of those respective class periods. It shouldn't take too long to do this. 
um, you can simply type in you can click this down arrow and it will select your um, day that you want a lesson plan for so for the sake of this I'm gonna go ahead and do some quick lesson planning um, so uh, 9 9 2015 it's our first day of school uh, I would basically type in here uh, introductions getting to know you activity because our class periods are only 20 minutes long or so it's it's there's not going to be too much that i'm going to be doing there i'm going to hit Control c to copy this i'm going to paste it into each of these um, into each of these subject areas um, we do not meet on this day and i'm going to go ahead and paste that there as well and then click submit at this point if i want a lesson plan for the entire week I might go and select submit another response at this point um, I can select the 10th and I can do some lesson planning here I'm not gonna make you guys sit and watch me do that want to show you what results here so I'm gonna go back to our our form here and I'm gonna click on view responses when I click on view responses it's going to send me to a spreadsheet now at this point I don't want to I don't want this to be named lesson planning 2015 2016 responses so I might choose to update this whatever I update this to this is what the world is gonna see uh, via my website so I'm gonna call this 2015 16 lesson calendar and at this point I'm probably gonna hide the timestamp I don't need the world to know when I did all this uh, it's not really that important uh, so I'm gonna hide that I'm also going to uh, relabel this here date um, I'm not sure I must not have uh, labeled that appropriately in my Google form so I'm going to change that to date I'm also going to hide my reflections the way I'm doing this by the way is I'm selecting the entire column by clicking up here on the letter of the column and then I'm right clicking if you're using a Chromebook you would simply use your index finger middle finger double and tap at the same time with both fingers and that will act as a right click I'm gonna go ahead and hide this column hide this column as well hide this column and finally hide TOK 12 reflection now these are going to be fairly large uh, sometimes there will be a, maybe a paragraph or so that I'll be typing in here so what I would recommend doing here is turning um, this spreadsheet into uh, turning on word wrap the way to do that text wrap is to um, select this little text wrapping icon over here and just have it loop Okay. You do this for each column and it will loop around and that way you don't have to have huge columns here okay so as you continue to update this um, you'll see over on the left hand side here column B the date will be here uh, and this will gradually fill up as you add more and more dates to your lesson planning uh, you'll also have descriptions of what you did you can always go back in there and edit what you've written in your Google form you just simply double click you can paste in URLs YouTube's things like that whatever you use in your class um, and so once you've done this uh, at that point now you're gonna have to embed this into uh, your Swift website okay and the way to do this here um, is to click on this publish to the web link right here and when you click on publish to the web what this is going to do is it's going to make this spreadsheet visible to the world uh, because we want to embed this into our Swift website the first thing you want to do is click on this embed link right here and we're going to embed the entire document you can always just embed this one form right here uh, this one sheet which is labeled form responses one that's what I'm going to select here because I only want people to see this at the end of September I am going to go down and essentially create another sheet uh, I'm gonna create a sheet and I'm gonna label it September 2015 and I'm gonna cut all of my September posts and I'm gonna paste them into that new new sheet that way this form responses sheet is empty um, the reason for that is because by the time we get to March I don't want to have kids scrolling way the heck down into row number you know um, 180 or whatever it would be one you know or I don't know what row uh, basically way the heck down there um, so I'm gonna every month I'm gonna basically cut and paste those into a new sheet and that new sheet will be labeled um, the month and that way I can archive my work and 
uh, go back the next school year and look and see what I did on each of those days and then check my reflections to see if I needed to make any changes. So at this point right now I'm going to do what Google is telling me to do and that's press control C to copy. Uh, and then what I'm going to do from my Sumner dashboard, I'm going to select Swift. Um, please note if this is not under your favorites right now, you can go click on all links. Go down over here to district links and click on the Swift link. You'll note here that there's a gold star right there. I clicked that so it would add it to my favorites. Uh, so I would click on Swift here. And once I get to the Swift login, I would log in. Uh, and it looks like this once you log in. So at this point here, I'm going to create a new page. I'm going to call this 2015-16 lesson calendar. Okay, that way it matches my Google Sheet title. I'm going to go ahead and click on submit. It's going to take me now to that page. And I'm going to click right here on that little button that says HTML. When I click on that HTML, I'm simply going to hit control V and that is going to embed my Google spreadsheet into this page. I will click update. And at this point now I see my Google sheet. You can change the width of this sheet. You'll notice you can't actually see any content there. I'm going to click save and then if I'd like to see what this page looks like I can click on visit page and it will show me my spreadsheet it embeds it now you'll notice it's it you have to scroll from left to right I don't really like that so I'm gonna go ahead and continue to I'm gonna change the width here of this okay. and then hit save and then click visit page and you'll note almost the whole lesson fits there. Might need to increase it just a little bit wider here. Hit save there. Hit refresh. And now at this point, you don't have to worry about people scrolling, having to scroll to see what you did. Now the nice thing is this is the last time I will have to update my Swift page. I do not have to go back to this ever again if I don't want to for the rest of the school year. I can go ahead and close that page. Um, you also want to make sure that page is automatically published. You don't want to uncheck. Uh, you don't want to uncheck that. You want it to be published. Okay, so the page is published. Now, anytime a student comes to my website, um, they can go and check out uh, my 2015-2016 lesson calendar. And anytime that I want to uh, update that calendar, all I have to do is simply go to this link right here and simply type in the next day's lesson and students will see it automatically it will automatically update on the Swift page so they can have an idea a running update of what you did in each class as well as links that you used in that class so that's about it that's uh, lesson planning with using Google Forms um, working smarter not harder to notify students and parents what you're doing every day in class uh, and uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me again at Brian underscore Slater at Sumner SD dot org. You can also reach me on Twitter at Teach Slate. Thank you very much and have a great day. Bye bye.